Hi, my name is Anne-Marie Leahy and I work in Career Services at Santa Monica College. And in order to get you ready to get work in graphic design, I want to make sure you understand the importance of having a portfolio. So why do you need a portfolio? Um, jobs, internships, transfer first schools, they're all going to want samples of your work, which is also known as a portfolio. Um, portfolios um, they're a way to share your work with people um, and that helps you with networking, getting freelance jobs, um, all of these things. And um, they're also a way to document and catalog your work um, because you're going to need to do that as you go through your educational process, right? Each class that you take, each project that you do for the class, you're going to want to save not just the final design, but the process of how you got there. So they take a lot of time and energy to work on. So I'm going to share with you some tips on what you should be thinking about now so you're not scrambling at the last minute. So there's a couple ways you can present your work. You can present it on a PDF or on a personal website. Um, both have good uses, right? It's kind of standard expectation at this point that you're going to have a personal website. So this is not really like an either or. Um, but some um, companies may accept or schools may accept PDFs of your work. So when would you kind of use one or the other, right? So a PDF, um, a PDF is just a document, right? So when you look at that document, this would be your 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 cover page. You'd have portfolio, your name, your last name, your title, your and your contact information. Then your next page would be um, a table of contents, and then you choose the products projects that you want to um, put in there. The projects that you include in a PDF are going to be really tailored to whomever you were emailing them to, right, or sharing them with. Um, so it's probably going to be super curated for a particular job or school or whatever. Um, so that's the benefit of a PDF. Um, it also makes it really easy. Most of the time, if you get an interview for a position, you will have to present um, your work. And if you're presenting your work, it's often easier to present using a, a PDF than to scroll through a website, right? Because when you do a PDF, each page can be its own section. Um, so that's kind of cool. So it's, it's easier for, for presentation and you can make it more curated. Um, the disadvantage is that, you know, it's not going to necessarily help you build your freelance business. And if your hard drive crashes, there goes all your work. Um, <laughs> and, and it is more specific and more curated. So you, so you don't typically showcase as broad an ar array of work to attract multiple different audiences and employers, right? Um, that's kind of a benefit and a drawback um, for that. So that's why you want to use it in specific situations. Now, if you look at what a personal website can look like, um, you know, here you're going to be able to, um, people, recruiters are going to be able to find you online. People are going to be able to hire you for freelance projects. You can showcase a wide variety of skills and then your audience chooses and it's really easy. All they have to do is click on a button and they'll get to see if they want to see branding. They see branding. If they want to see your packaging work, they'll see your packaging work, right? So it lets your audience have a little bit more control and a little bit more ease to see the, your work. Um, but then, of course, again, the disadvantage would be that it is so broad, right? But in the beginning of your career, I hate to say that that's a disadvantage because I think it's good to showcase a wider range of skills in the beginning of your career because you need to start somewhere. And you may not start exactly where you want to start, but you'll get there eventually. So that being said, when do you need to create your portfolio? Today. <laughs> start start now, right? Um, you know, uh, one way to get a job when you graduate, because that's why you're here, right? You want to get work opportunities, um, is to have internships. And internships are typically offered in the summer. However, companies hire for summer internships. Um, there's a couple of months. So like if you, if you're looking for an internship and you're like, oh, my portfolio is ready. It's January. Let me look in January. You're probably not going to find any job postings. Um, but you will find job postings in October and November and in March and April. Those tend to be the months 
that employers recruit in for whatever reason. Um, and they are, and that is when they're recruiting for summer positions. So yes, they will be hiring in October, November for a summer internship, which is crazy, right? But I want to share that with you. Not all. Some some companies will hire for summer in October, November, and some companies will hire for summer in March and April. Um, but I just want you to know that because if you have a specific company that you want to work at or an opportunity that you want, um, you need to be ready almost a year in advance, right? So that's why you want to start collecting your work now so that no matter when that moment comes, that that opportunity comes up, you're ready to apply because it's never about when we're ready. It's about when it's available and we have to be ready. So we need to stay ready. Um, hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> um, it's good to have at least three portfolio uh, pieces ready for any of those application deadlines. And again, your school, your class projects are fine. So um, now, um, as I mentioned, you definitely, you know, you, you will have the occasion for both a personal website and a, um, and a PDF, right? But industry standard at this point is that you will have a website. Um, so what does that look like? Where do you find a website? So you may look at like Squarespace or Adobe Portfolio or WordPress or any of these um, sites. It doesn't really matter. They just, you know, most of them you have to pay for, right? Because they're storing your work digitally. So if your hard drive crashes, your work still exists somewhere, <laughs> which is like a beautiful thing, right? Um, I think most students end up using Adobe Portfolio because you're already paying for Adobe Creative Cloud and the Adobe Portfolio is free when you're when you're paying for the Adobe Creative Cloud already. So that tends to be a really popular one. Um, what I can tell you also is that so that's your web hosting site. That's going to store your work digitally for you and employers will be able to Google you and find you. Um, and you're going to need a domain name. So some of those um, hosting sites will offer you a domain name, but some students choose to um, pay for their own domain name, right? So um, domain name is what people type into the browser to find you on the internet and the best practice is that you use your first and last name because that's your brand and that's what you're selling you want to have name recognition um students often have a tendency to want to use like their dream business name um which i totally understand but um i'm going to recommend that you do not because um, business names, whether they're registered or unregistered, can be quite confusing to recruiters. Um, you want to save your business name for the day that you actually open a business with multiple employees, but for now, you really want your name recognition. So you want to use your first and last name um, as your uh, domain name so that you can start building your brand. Now, now that we know how you're going to do it and where you're going to do it, <laughs> What are you going to choose, right? So choosing your portfolio projects is often really difficult. Um, you know, there's ways you can choose um, projects that speak to a cu customer that you want to work with. Um, but really, at this stage of your career, again, I think it's better to be to showcase a, a, a variety of skills um, and um, aesthetics, like different that can appeal to different markets, right? So you want to show a broad range of skills and um, and design taste. Um, often it's best to choose the project that you're most proud of, um, the one maybe you learn the most from, um, the ones that are most in alignment with your interests, right? Um, or the ones that are most complete that show your design process really clearly and thoroughly. Um, those are really great ones to include as well. Uh, but really because the bottom line is that employers are looking for your ability to tell a story, to talk about your process from inspiration, to final project. They want to know how you solve problems because nobody's perfect. Um, the employer's not perfect, you're not perfect, so the, you're, you're not being hired to be perfect, you're being hired to solve problems. So how did you solve problems in your process? How did you use research to inform your design choices? Um, of course, they want to see beautiful, innovative, creative, and inspiring design solutions. Um, and then, you know, they'll, they'll look at your skill level and the tools you use. There's no right answer really for the tools you use. I think employers just want to get a sense of how interested you are in emerging design tools and how you choose the tools that you use. 
So what you definitely want to avoid is you want to avoid showing too much work. It's much stronger to have five quality projects than 20 projects, right? So you're going to do the editing for the employer. Um, you also don't want to show not enough work, right? So there's 20 is too much, but two is not enough because they don't know, are those the only two projects you've ever done? Like they want someone with a little bit more experience than that. So um, you want your work to be super scannable. Um, you want the design. So if, they, so if they're looking through, they can find branding. They can find packaging. They can find it very easy. Click, click and move, click and go. Um, clean design. So don't have spelling errors. Don't have typos. Don't have widows. Um, all of those things will distract from the content, right? They're going to hire you to design things that they want to make sure do not have grammatical errors or typos or widows, right? So showcase the best of your design skills in building the portfolio. Also, there's a real strong tendency for students to take the, their PDF projects, because a lot of times you will make your projects as PDFs, and to just import them into your portfolio as images, but um, that's a no-no. Employers can tell when you do that. It, you, they want to see the text as text, right? So go through, take the time to upload the text as text to make sure that it's all laid out well. Um, also, text as images is not um, a disability. Um, it's not compliant, right? So, so you want to show that you have the skill to in, in, import the text as text and the images as images. Um, you want to make sure your con that it that there's information on how to contact you. Um, you want to make sure that your personal website is mobile responsive, right? Because if again, they're going to be hiring you for doing this kind of work, so um, they want their product to be mobile responsive. They want to know that you can do it. And please um, do not um, password protect your projects. It's a big turnoff unless the content legally requires that it's pa um, password protected, but I don't often see that um, with the school projects that you're assigned. So keep that in mind. And the last thing is just make sure again that, you know, think of your portfolio as your art gallery. You want, um, you don't want the walls that you ha hang your artwork on to be more designed than the art itself, right? You want this to be the platform to showcase your projects. So clean, clean background, clean design, um, easy to read font, make it super navig easy to navigate and let your um, portfolio pieces be the star. You know, for example, if you look at something like this, you don't know what you're looking at. It's hard to read, it's hard to navigate through. Something a little better, you know, you have headlines, what was the challenge, what was the project overview, it's clean, it's easy to get through, you can skip from section to section. So typically, employers are looking for um, the summary of what your project is that you're showing them. So what was the class assignment? What were you asked to solve? Um, what was the time frame? What, did you have a day? Did you have a week? Did you have a semester? Because that's a big difference. Um, the process and tools. Again, we talked about what tools did you use. Um, what was your in inspiration? So if you have a, a mood board, um, they love to see those. Um, why did you choose a particular font or color? Um, you know, was that part of your research and how did you arrive at that? Maybe sharing that. The consumer profile. Who are you designing for? Children, men, women? Um, any problems and solutions that you came across? What you learned from them? Sketches. Show the sketches of how you arrived at your design ideas. And then your final work. So these are all processes that you go through anyways. So let's take a look at what this can look like as an example, right? So, um, you're going to see um, in your portfolio, you're going to have a title page, an about you page, so they know a little bit about you, your table of content, and then um, your sections. So let's, you know, in your sections depend on what you did for that project. Um, but we mentioned what they could look like before. So, you know, here could be your title page where you have your name, title, contact information, you're about me, which tells them who you are, where you're located, what kind of design you do, what inspires you, your unique skills, just a paragraph, nothing too major. Then we go through the table of contents. So you let them know um, what, what are you showing them, you know, social media, typography, mobile, web, oil paintings, whatever. They, if you, you may want to choose page numbers as well, then they can skip 
over. Like, oh, I only want to see the mobile and web. I don't care about the rest. You know what I mean? It just makes it easier to navigate. Um, and then, you know, you'll go into for your PDF, you'll, you'll have, so if you had bra branding as a category, then here's your branding category so that they have a break. Because also when you're presenting, you want to say, okay, so now I'm going to take you through my branding projects. Um, so you have that break in the presentation. Gives them a chance to rest their eyes and reset their mind to about what they're about to see. Um, so, you know, then as I mentioned, some of the categories, the, the summary of what the project was that you were asked to do, you know, your scope, your role. So sometimes if you were on a team project, what were the specific roles that you were in charge of? This is an example that shows you what tools they used, your inspiration um, and your research, right? So you can share that as well. The process. So again, explain your design process and how you made your design decisions. Um, your sketches, right? So you can share, and you know, you notice with all of these, there's just a little paragraph or two explaining the visuals that you're looking at, which is really nice. And you can see how they're using each one page to showcase um, that section, right? So final design has its own page, sketches had its own page. Um, and then again, with just that little, um, just that little explanation of what you're looking at. You know, some students choose to show iterations um, before they get to their final um, design. Like we tried this, it didn't work, so we tried this instead. Um, but you can, so you can choose to include that if you like, or just go to the final project. So I know I'm going really fast because <laughs> this is just an overview, but you can spend some time with this PDF, download it, go through it, um, and I'll give you um contact for where you can get help in the future as well. The other thing that I just wanted to show you, so that was a PDF. Conversely, here's where you can look at a personal website. So if you go to a personal website, where are you going to see? It's a lot of the same information. It's just laid out differently, right? Um, so here you're going to have um, your name, your title, also the about, um, the project category, same things, and the contact information, but each of these are a click rather than a flip to a page. Um, so if you click on the about, here's another example of an about, um, same information that you include. The portfolio, again, you have all these different categories. For, um, when I clicked on the branding category, it took me, this, this designer actually chose to include four branding categories. Um, so for branding projects, excuse me, on their branding page. So if I click on this first one here over here to the left, um, they take me through um, their summary and their inspiration. They and then when I scroll, this so this is scrolling down, right? Um, so it's not as fluid as the PDF if you're doing it as a presentation. Um, but um, on a website, I can scroll through um, easily as well. So you take them through your process, um, you take them through your font color and choices, and then they presented their final work, right? So this was all scrolling down so you could kind of see their process on the web. So it's all the same information, it's just a, it's just a scroll versus a page flip. <laughs> um, and then the content, um, sorry, the contact information is, um, you know, you can do this a lot of different ways. Um, if you set this up, um, it needs to be a place where you're checking. So if you have this linked um, to an email address, make sure it's an email address that, that you're checking. Some people choose to actually put their email address instead of a contact form. Um, there is no right answer here. You can do whatever you want, whatever way you want to do it. Um, just make sure again, it's something that you're checking because the last thing you want is somebody to reach out to you to hire you and you never respond to that email or you never check that email. Um, so make sure that that's set up. And finally, um, I just want to recommend, I just showed you a couple of examples super quickly of what a PDF uh, portfolio and what a website portfolio could look like, but I definitely encourage you to do your own exploration. They call it benchmarking, right? So it's just the the step of doing research um, 
to the look and feel of what other design portfolios are doing. Um, so you know where you stand um, versus, you know, if an employer is looking at websites, they're looking at yours and they're looking at all these other websites. So where what does your portfolio look like in comparison to that, right? There's industry standards. So there's certain things that are you'll see that are common across all um, portfolios. And there are certain things that you may choose to take um, from others like some some designer portfolios actually have like a little shopping cart so you can they're actually selling some of their work on their site so that's a cool feature that you may choose to add you may not um, but there's a couple of examples that I think are worth looking at so you can get an idea <clears throat> and um, and then I also just lastly just wanted to share with you because um, some of you, some graphic design students like to um, are really interested in the UX UI um, aspect of graphic design. And um, I think it is worth your while to look at how uh, a UX UI project, um, which they call a case study, um, they have a lot of different subcategories, you know, wireframing, user journeys, user personas, things like that, that you, language that you may not see in common graphic design projects. Um, so I think it, uh, if you're interested in that and you're wanting to include a mobile project or a web project, you should probably uh, check out some of these portfolios to see what that looks like. You can have a portfolio with graphic design and UX UI projects in it. That's not a problem at all. Um, it's just that their contents can be a little bit different. So just take a look at those examples as well. Um, so that you make sure when you lay it out, um, your case study, that you have all the sort of standard um, components. So I know that was tons and tons and tons of information and super, super, super fast, but um, know that you are not alone. <laughs> uh, you know, we have Graphic Design 50 um, at Santa Monica College, which is a class that, that focuses on um, designing portfolios. Uh, either for transfer to a bachelor's program or for internships or jobs. We also have career services that can help answer basic questions um, and academic counseling that can help you find the best classes um, to take to get those great portfolio projects. Um, so we are here, we can help you, we can assist you, you are not on your own. Hopefully this gave you a nice overview and you can refer back to download the PDF to kind of go through it a little bit more at your own pace. <laughs> but we're super excited for you and totally here to help.